Howdy folks and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show. This week we are, I don't know about you, but in Adelaide here where we are struggling with the cold weather or I'm struggling with the cold weather. We just had a few cold, the, the last week had a, we had a few cold nights, but we really shouldn't complain too much about being cold when there's the lights of people who live in Canberra and other parts yeah. of the world where it's actually cold. But for us, when it gets below 10, so cold. we uh, rug up and just complain and go, go we're in the depths of winter. We haven't even reached winter yet. So. We haven't even reached winter. Yeah. And I think because some of the days have been like crisp and clear and sunny, it means the nights and the mornings have been extra cold. Yep. So um, we're going to cover keeping warm while we're camping. But before we get into the nitty gritty, don't forget to subscribe wherever you're listening uh, to the podcast today or if you're on YouTube and also jump into our, um, what is Facebook it called, group. the Facebook group, Snowy's, Snowy's Camping, Camping Show. show. Uh, we just have have a chat about things and talk about upcoming episodes or, or you guys can give us your opinion on things as well. So we have sort of covered a little bit through other episodes. I think episode eight we did early on in the piece was unexpected wind and rain when camping. So we sort of touched on camping in this season then. And we also did episode 11, um, which was with Dean from Cedar Summer, and that was sleep system ratings. Oh, yep. um, and that covers everything basically you need to know about how to sleep warm or how to make sure your whole sleep set up cuts it. Um, I didn't know the episode, but I believe we've done a staying cool or um, comfortable when camping. I reckon well, it was like one of our this, one, or t- one or two it's very, early, very on. early on. So this is the opposite season now. Opposite season now and I'm really cold and I haven't done a proper trip yet just because we're sort of in the final stages of getting the van done mm-hmm. and worked a bit on that on the weekend. But um it's yeah, been a long I'm project, ready. 12 months. Yeah, plus. we've been – I think it, we went away in – when was the last time we were away? I think February. We were away in February and then after that trip – oh, no, KI, which was um, end of February, early March, I oh, think. Okay. And after that trip we were just like we're not going on any more trips until the van is finished because yeah, otherwise right. it's just going to draw out, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, this weekend let's go camping instead of – working on the van. Right. So we've got a trip coming up. Uh, we've we've actually next weekend we're going to go away for a short trip and then the June long weekend we're going away. So Is the van going to be finished next deadline. weekend? Yes, it is. Not this weekend, coming the weekend after. Okay. It's right. definitely finished. Okay. It's never you finished. You heard, f- heard it here first, folks. It's never finished though, is it? No, but, uh, well, you know, anyway. it's going to be finished in, in terms of what we've working on now. Anyway, this, isn't a, this isn't a show we've on, on, on me and my van. This is yeah. a show on keeping warm. If you want to know more about Lauren's van, let us know. We'll talk about it when it's finished. When so it's finished. it may not ever happen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Right. So. Uh, warm winter camping, staying warm. Staying warm. Just, both sleeping. I mean, the sleep systems. One sleeping, covers sleeping warm, around the camp, around the camp your fire, body, and all that sort of jazz. Yep. So um, first things first is the very obvious thermals. You can get those cool poly pro ones, which are like multi-striped and yeah. different patchy things if you want to look cool and especially 90s. Um, but then there's also good old Merino ones, which yep. I, I probably prefer. I like personally. Merino because they don't get smelly. So if you are away for a number of nights, you can wear Merino a few times over without getting stinky. Yeah. And they do regulate your body temperature a little bit better. Um, but the poly pro ones, yeah, they do the job. Uh, if you're in a wet sure. environment, they're probably good because they do dry quicker than the merino ones. Mm. Um, but uh, but they yeah they can get smelly as with any synthetic material they get smelly. Much I quicker. find also that if I put my thermals on merino thermals, even if you know there's fluctuation in temperature, if I sort of put them on at a certain time and it doesn't get as cold as I thought it was going to be, I'm still fine. Yep. Whereas often if I'm if polypros, for example, yep. sometimes I can be like, oh, I need to take them off or, yep. you know, you find yourself. You get clammy. You get clammy. I've got a friend who's um, is another family that we camp with. We love camping with them because they're like the remote just sort of no facilities kind yeah. of thing and they've got two kids the same age as ours so it works really well. That's good. Um, we don't get away enough with them but she has, she always says to me, and she's from Germany, and mm-hmm. she says four o'clock's thermal time in winter. Yeah. Four o'clock, stop what you're doing, go and put your thermos on because she figures yep. at four o'clock the sun's still up your body's warm, you've been doing stuff, put your thermals on to retain that warmth in your mm-hmm. body and mm-hmm. then you're comfortable throughout the night. And it makes perfect sense because it's harder to warm yourself up once you're cold than it is to maintain the warmth. Yeah, from while you're that makes way state. more sense. So before you sit down, uh, you know, after you've done dinner and you sit down around the fire and, you you know, you stop 
you know, your, your blood Stop pumping moving. is fast is when you're going to get cold. So before that happens, put your thermals on. Just yeah, warm. it's like if you're like, oh, it's a bit cold now, I better go and put thermals on. It's probably a bit late. Absolutely. Yeah. And that obviously goes with extremities, socks, gloves, beanie. beanie. Mm. Now I had a uh, – we, we have done a, a video or I think I did a video on sleeping warm, how yeah. to sleep warm. And I believe it was in that someone – I got into a conversation with someone who said that my theory that I don't don't know where I got it from, but my theory around thirty percent of your body heat coming out of your head. Mm. I, it's just something that I've always heard that. I think even from a, as being a kid. Okay, right. Yeah. So I, I yeah I don't know where it's just been around, but someone said it's actually disproven. So I'm oh, not okay. I'm not sure, but whatever the case, you still lose heat out of your head. So yeah, yeah cover the extremities, um, top of your head, retain all that. I think warmth. everyone feels warmer when they put a beanie on though. That's yeah, fact, yeah, surely. Yeah. And you can get cool looking beans. Yeah, so. yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, talking about gloves, I find the fingerless ones go a go a lot longer way or go a long way compared to like the full fingered gloves or mittens or things like that. Because when and when I say fingerless, I mean the ones that have the tips chopped off. Because if I'm sort of, you know, cooking dinner or doing after dinner hot chocolates or hot, you know, cold, freezing cold morning things can actually do things, whereas with gloves I find it a little bit harder. Okay. To so do you mean you can in. leave the gloves on and yeah, still you can do leave stuff? The, you can leave them on and sort of still be functional as okay. opposed to sort of having to take them off and put do something and then put them back on. I've not actually tried the fingerless ones. I mm. usually just have, well, usually my hands in my pockets when I'm around the campfire. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, gloves will certainly make a big difference. And talking about pockets, pocket warmers are – Awesome. Yep. I picked some up. I can't remember where I got them from now, but they're, um, you know, small. I don't know how. They're probably a bit bigger than a chewy packet, I guess. Um, and they've got that little clicker thing in them and you click it and it yep. makes that chemical reaction. I think it's salt or something. Anyway, yeah. makes them super hot. They're the best. And the best thing about them is re- that they're reusable. So you can buy things. I think they're called hot pockets maybe and they're disposable. Okay. Um, and yours like are reuse- two, ones you got yeah, are reusable, but you can get disposable ones. They're like two dollars each or whatever. Um, but that didn't sit super well with me in terms of you know how often you'd want to use mm. them and how many you'd be churning through. So the reusable ones are excellent, and they are so hot when they first go. They're so hot that you can't even hold them like fully in your bare hands. Mm-hmm. Um, so stuffing them into shoes or even in the pockets of your pants or pockets of your jumper or whatever. So good to help keep you warm. So they're little hand size ones because I yeah. know we used to have similar things at Snowies. I don't know if we still do, but I haven't seen good reusable options in the Snowies range for, yeah. for some time. Yeah, now. they're little hand. Yeah, they're little hand size ones. And you reset them by boiling the yep, water. You reset yep. them by boiling and does, the water. Does one click then last the whole night? Like, or do you have it to reset usually them during sort the night? Of, I would say, of most in terms of sort of gauging of time. We used to use them for the kids' footy in winter. Mm. So at the beginning of the game, if it was freezing, you know, playing 8 o'clock on Friday night or something like that, mm. um, I would crack them in my pockets yep. and then throughout the game at like quarter time, half time, boys come up and stick their hands in my pockets oh, and get okay. their little fingers warm and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So they at least last a footy game. Okay. Especially if you've got them in your pockets. But. So I guess if you've got some water boiling, you can reset them while you're around the campfire. Yeah, absolutely. Night. And the other thing is snacks. Yeah, so that oh, we covered off on that the video. We'll put a link to that video mm. um, in the show notes. But that's all about your metabolism. Um, yeah, working to uh, now. I'm I'm no I don't know what you call it a biologist, nutritionist, or something. I'm not sure. But your metabolism is working to body scientist. Body scientist <laughs> <laughs> to process your food, right? And in yeah. doing that, it's using energy, and that's warming your body up. So yeah. have a, a high calorie snack. Your body's working to process all those calories, and mm. that's generating heat. So make yeah. sure you have. Food. That's why you eat more in winter, right? To try and stay warmer. Definitely. In summer. Yeah. Um, so in terms of sort of just on your personal person, that's about covers it. Do you have any other um, thoughts about well, that? Well, a, a good down jacket or synthetic jacket, like a puffy one, I think is yeah. good. Like the, I, I love to just, if I'm sitting around the campfire, a big thick jacket, once you're stationary, mm. I find that too much when I'm doing stuff around the campsite. But otherwise layers um, are a good thing if you're kind of active. So yeah. base layer and layers in between and something to really cut out the wind. If it's If it's windy, you need something to kind of, stop the wind from blowing that warm air underneath your clothing yeah. out. So like a wind stopper 
Um, that, and that like doesn't a, yeah, have to like be a, a soft, soft shell windstopper type thing. Soft shell, yeah, or even a rain jacket. Yeah. Like a rain jacket cuts out the water, but in this instance it's cutting out the wind and just creating another layer to trap that warmth. And then yeah. underneath that you've got fleece. So layers are a good way to go about it. And that way if you find you're sitting around the campfire and it's a bit too hot with your big jacket on, you can take it off and you've got layers, but you don't just want a T-shirt and then a big jacket. Yeah. It's not as versatile. So yeah. I've always found as well that having – you know, that outer layer that does is windproof mm-hmm. actually means that I'm wearing less layers overall. Yeah. Um, which is good. And then sort of also reduces how much you have to pack as well. If you're someone who gets really cold, just like a good quality thermal, nice thick fleece jumper yep, and a raincoat or a wind stop with some sort of wind breaker jacket. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. I think people are quick too to sort of rug up on the top. Yeah. And just put some pants on the bottom and then you sit sitting down and your legs are getting cold and then yeah. your feet are cold and you've got this weird balance of a warm top and cold feet. Yeah. So yeah, you just make sure you've got socks and, and good thermals on the on the bottom layer as well. I always find as well, um pull on shoes like blunt stones and stuff, the actual sort of leather shoes or hiking boots or things like that. They keep my feet way warmer than just sneakers. Is that so sneakers like probably because of the mesh in sneakers, I I'm suppose. One, yeah, like yeah. if I'm just wearing sneakers or casual shoes, mm-hmm. I mean I have been a bit partial to, you know, Crocs and double layer of those mad Crocs. heat holder socks. Like so it's like a, a good campsite UGG, UGG right boot, a- friendly <laughs> UGG boot thing because then you can just like whip your Crocs off and get straight yeah. into bed with your giant socks on. But, um, yeah, I think sort of – Shoes like leather boots or pull like your blundstones or things like that. I think they just trap the heat a bit better. What about if they get wet? If it's wet leather, is that, are they cold then? Not that I've necessarily okay. thought too much about. I mean, if you've got good quality socks as well, but I've worn blunnies and they've been a bit wet and that's not made too much difference okay. for me. Yeah. I guess they're not really like a sponge, whereas sneakers or sand shoes are. Yeah. Yeah, you want to stay dry. Anyway, that's it. probably enough for personal. Enough for personal. So, yeah, around the camp, I think a really good thing still on wind is being able to have a wind break if mm-hmm. possible. I mean, we've talked loads about having a wind break in episode eight. Yep. Um, but I just sort of remember growing up when we used to go away with Nan and Pa, we would have, you know, in the middle of outback New South Wales and it would get minus degrees but we would have this huge big canvas tarp wind break around that would often only have like a small gap that everybody would sort of walk into and the campfire was in the middle and yeah, okay. whatever. Um, but every morning without fail you'd get out of your tent and you'd traipse across to the little, you know, wind break camp thing. As soon as you stepped in there it would be so much warmer yeah, because okay. obviously the campfire has been very gently smouldering all night because it's an active cooking campfire and it's just sort of trapped this little yeah, heat bubble right. where the frost doesn't settle yeah, and okay. things like that. So I think having a, a way to really effectively wind break your space um, can really help if you're I think if it's quite cold. Yeah, I think in episode eight we talked about using maybe tents and cars from memory yeah. about making a windbreak. That's not going to work with your theory though because that obviously the warm air is going to get underneath the car but you're yeah. actually trapping it from the ground up. So Yeah, but even from the sense that if it is windy, often like on the weekend um, when on a trip down south just for a bit of a hike, it was so cold. But mm. then when you go through a part where – there are trees and natural windbreak and the wind wasn't there at all. Mm. It's actually really, really warm. Mm. And then as soon as you got out into the wind again, it was really cold. Yep. So we, so yeah, if it is cold because it's windy, consider trying to set up a windbreak because that can potentially help keep your camp space warmer as well. So many benefits to cutting wind out of your campsite. Yeah. It's just not nice to have whether it's hot, cold or otherwise really. Yeah. Um, campfire, you're a big Obviously. fan of the campfire yeah. all, all the time. Sit around and warm yourself up. Yes. Um, don't go over the top with how much would you have in there? Like have it burn burn what you need to yeah. to cook and stay warm. I have some people who just burn too much and it's you know, you can't get within four meters of the campfire. Mm. It's just that's a bit much. Yeah, massive. You want to be able to sit near it. Mm. Um and obviously that helps to keep things warm, but on the weekend I don't know for anybody else who follows Harry from Fire to Fork on Instagram, but I do. He was away and had his campfire set up and had this campfire reflector, I think it was called, and I was like, yeah, that's amazing. Um, And I want to get one until I saw the price and I'm like, God damn, because they're real expensive. But 
I want to get something at least like it or work out how to DIY it myself or something along those lines. But yeah, it was, you know, with your your camp stoves or whatever, just a windshield. It was like just that, but giant tin, size yeah. for your campfire and just sort of did a half moon shape across the back of it. But it was really interesting because the it was obviously making a difference to their campfire and it was obviously reflecting quite a lot of warmth back to a targeted area, quite a lot of light, things like that. So for me, I reckon that'll come in really handy. So some, maybe something to consider for the future. So not just a windshield but a reflector. So it's using it's reflecting radiant heat. Reflecting back radiant back heat towards, back to yeah, you, reflecting okay. light back to you. Also, um, yeah, protecting the campfire from the wind, all that sort of jazz. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty Probably cool. And I think it. it would also help to make campfire a lot more efficient. Yeah. Maybe you can make something with a just a lightweight frame and a whole heap of tin foil. Maybe. <laughs> tin foil, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ben. I wasn't really being serious. Uh, Cole's under the camp chair. Now I think we did we touch on I think in the video. I just I feel mentioned like safety like, Ben's coming out right now to Ben's be like don't put Coles under your yep, camp chair. I'm putting my safety warden hat on. Um But seriously. Well it's gonna keep have you warm, ever done obviously. It? Well, no. Of course haven't. you haven't. Oh, I've sat around a campfire. But I, if you like if you have your chair and it's real cold, but if you have where your chair is, you dig out a little hole under your chair and you put the coals in like you would if you're about to cook a camp oven or mm. whatever. So there's no active flame, there's no embers, there's no bits, whatever. You just put the coals underneath your camp chair. Oh, my Lord. It's like well, I've heard warmth it. radiating up in your chair and your your bum is toasty. and Because <laughs> you know when you're like sitting around a campfire and you sit down on your chair, it's like the whole front of you is warm. Is warm and burns, and the whole back of you yep. isn't cold. Yeah, it's like a heat sink out the oh, back. So I've, I've heard of a similar thing, and I think I touched on it in that video that I said we'll put the link to where uh, in, Indigenous, like Aboriginal, Indigenous, and possibly um, it might not have been Aboriginal. I, I think don't it was know, American, in, like American, an American Indian, but, Indigenous Indians. Um, yeah, but anyway, going back towards where, where yeah. we had fossil fuels to burn to just you know click a button and, and the room heats for us. Mm. They would create a bed by burying coals. Put, Soil over the top and then yeah. sleep on that to create a warm bed to yeah. sleep on, which sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty um, cool. You just want to make sure you, I don't know, you doesn't get too hot. It's, Safety I don't know, man. I'm probably overthinking it. It's okay. I got a friend, okay, I, I think ben. he watches the rest of these, us will but have he'd warm just bums. be right on board with you and your safety bend comments. <laughs> Good. Well, it's true. Um, <laughs> People have banked me in other periods of time. I go, oh, what's happening? Oh, well, you're lucky I did that, aren't you? Yeah. Lucky Quite happy to pay safety me out. Safety to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so hotspot chairs, on. which probably are more in line with where you're coming from. So they are, I think, Oz Tent do a range of hotspot chairs and they're yep. chairs that have strategic pockets in them where, like I was talking about those hand warmers before mm. with the little clicky button thing. It's a big pouch But they're like much, that. much bigger, more like a huge wheat bag, and they do the same thing. You press the clicky button and it goes all hot and you slide them into spots on yep. the chair um, and they can create hot spots, hence the name. They've just, at the time of doing this, they've released a sleeping bag with these hot spots in oh, it as well. Oh, have they really? Which I think I, don't I actually know, saw I, something about I that. I don't know how comfortable it would be because it, it'd be quite – there's, there's pouches are on top of you, so it'd be quite a bit of weight sitting on top of you. It'd be warm. I don't actually think they're that – I don't think they're that heavy though. But if there's six pouches uh, on the top of this yeah. sleeping bag, it would be know. warm. But, be warm. you know, you don't have to use these pouches. You could use mm. heat bags or something. The only trouble with heat bags is you've got to be able to um, warm them up if you're mm. in a campsite. So yeah. And that's where the hotspot pouches are good because you can boil them to reset them, click the little – disc inside and, mm-hmm. it, and it warms up again. But, yeah, they've got chairs with, I don't it's like three pouches in the back. Yeah, so you've some got of lower two, back some of them three. Then, yeah, I think yeah. the moon chairs might even have them on the side. Or I might be making that up. I'm not 100% Possibly. sure. Yeah. But the other thing that we do, which I 10 out of 10 recommend to anybody, is sheepskins. Oh, yeah. So just having a sheepskin over your camp chair that mm-hmm. you then sort of sit on is amazing. You don't lose any heat out the back. Your chair, you just feel instantly like double as warm, I reckon. Right. And I think if you don't have a camp chair, I mean, don't have a sheepskin, you can use those woolen, woolen blankets and just mm-hmm. drape a woolen blanket, you know, double lay it over your chair. So no wonder you need your van for camping because you've got sheepskins for you, your partner and all your kids. You've got a massive tarp to create a windbreak. And now you're going to get your big reflector. Thing. I don't <laughs> On have top a massive. Of else you need. I don't have a massive tarp to make a windbreak. 
I'm just saying when I was growing up, my nana and pa did and it was yeah. awesome. What do you what do you make a windbreak with now? We don't make a we're, windbreak. We're getting off topic. Yeah. Okay. I don't make a windbreak yet. Okay. I'd like to one day, but I don't at the moment. Okay. And um, those woolen blankets are really good because, you know, like we, d- we touched on that in um, – episode 44 with the CFS about how if you're camping in the summer, having those woolen blankets is really important in your kit for bushfire safety and things like that. Okay. It's got two uses. So it's got two uses. It's not, you know, having them in your kit for warmth in summer, I meant for bushfire safety as well as warmth in winter. They're they're a good investment to have. And if you, you know, you can get ones that are thinner. It doesn't have to be the big, massive, thick ones. But they they work just as well if you're doubling up and they don't pack too big if, mm. if you are like sort of rolling them up and you're pa- packing yep. them wise. I've got a couple of cheap synthetic ones that I use. I should really upgrade them to. Yeah, to I wool, think the woolen ones are much better personally. Yeah, okay. Like a scout blanket, put all your scout badges on it. Yeah, and then if you have yeah having that on your chair makes a massive difference. And if it's sort of a bigger one, you can sort of wrap it around you as well. But it's still behind you. They're really handy. Yeah. So, so, okay. so safety, Ben, you can lead the next discussion. <laughs> so onto tent and annex space. Now, a big thing here, oh, yeah. gas heaters, obviously. Yeah. Um, and you pointed out um, something I mentioned in a in a video from the, the video we'll link to. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure what I was thinking, but I, I mentioned maybe putting, uh, it sounds like I said put the heater in the tent, heat it up, and then take the heater out. I don't um, think you were. I think I, you were just saying to use use the heater before you go to bed, but it, I was like, hang on a minute, are yeah. you saying to put it in the tent before yeah. you go to bed? Anyway. So uh, what I just want to clarify here is using a, a heater unless it specifically says it's okay for indoor and even then I'd be nervous because yeah. I know there are some that we've sold that said they've got oxygen safety cut out, but um, I'm not one to trust my life on a, you know, $20 item yeah. um, that supposedly got my life in its hands. Yeah. Um, but you get a carbon monoxide. Monoxide um, is a byproduct of burning LPG. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't smell, so it puts you to sleep and you don't wake up. Yeah, ever wake up if yeah. you breathe in enough of that. It just, I think, it fills your lungs with mucus and you just stop breathing and you die. Okay, um, so that's a bit morbid. Gross. Uh, serious. So, and this is the same with gas um, stoves and also gas fridges. Uh, you, yeah, it, it, it has a, a byproduct and it sits. I'm pretty sure it sits low. So if you've got an enclosed space. With anything burning LPG in it and it's not ventilated, so mm. nothing can escape, that's just going to build up in the tent where you're sleeping and it's going to put you to sleep. So don't use your gas heater in your tent. And this also sort of includes annexes as well where it's like if you have, you know, a caravan annex that has a roof and three walls and one whole caravan side, that's an enclosed space. Like I think by definition if something has a roof, it has to have at least one whole wall Yep. But missing, so you can only have three walls yeah. and a roof, or four walls, no roof, or things like that. So it's yeah. Um, well, Australian gas standards is actually a little diagram that comes on all of those yeah. um, gas appliances that has a, a a picture of what they define as an open, open space. space, and I'm pretty sure it has to have at least one open side so that that can all escape out of one side. It doesn't settle in there. Settle in there, yeah. But, I mean, ultimately little gas heaters, if you do have a nice wind-braked area or you do have an annex that does have an open side or even sort of like a three-walled gazebo or something like that, those little gas heaters can be really efficient at keeping the space warm if you don't have a campfire. Yep. And that's something that you um, that you need. I think that should be thought of as a personal heater too. It's not necessarily going to heat a massive space, but that's if you true. put it next to yourself or a few other people, you've got yeah. a heat source to warm you up. Yeah, that's true. The variation, are you going to go into the ducted one? Is that what you're going to say? No, so the variation that is a ducted heater, which we have seen. The gas mate brought one out a little while ago. Kudos to them for bringing it out. We, we don't, don't have do, it anymore. No. Um, but it was a cool idea, right? It was a gas heating unit with a ducted um, I think you did the video on it with it yeah, with a duck that went seemed, into the tent. It seemed really cool, but I think the real life application of it, sort of more longer term, wasn't quite up to scratch. It's just had a few shortcomings. Yeah. But we're yeah. seeing, I think, some variations of that coming out, hopefully in the not too distant future. Yeah. What they're like, the improvements they've made. I don't know for sure. I've, I've seen some things, but um but they're we different, right, because the, the combustion unit is external to the tent. That's right. And so, it pipes yeah. through, That's but right. this one's gas. You can, I know like a lot of caravans and campers have a built-in diesel heater, but you yeah. can get portable ones for that. 
Um, portable diesel heaters that obviously use diesel and not gas. Mm -hmm. But again, that still works on the premise of the combustion unit being external mm -hmm. to the actual sleeping space or enclosed space and it yeah. just pipes the, the warm air in through a, a duct. Yeah, yeah. And even then with this, with heaters, mm -hmm. you're in a tent that's got thin, maybe two layers of thin fabric. It's not yeah. insulated. You don't have pink bats in your tent. I guess you could put them in there if you wanted. Um, but uh, Need a lot more than gonna, a big van, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to heat that space up. Yeah. Um, and unless you keep pumping that air in there continually, uh, it's going to cool down really quickly. So yeah. think of a heater as a personal heater, maybe something to warm the air up in your tent before you get in the tent. Yeah. So you can crawl into bed while it's, while it's warm and then – turn it off. So the air is still going to be cold yeah. outside, but you're going to be warm inside your sleeping bag. Probably a better thing to preheat your sleeping bag. So using hot water, but I don't know if we mentioned that. We mentioned that. Yeah. yeah hot no, water we are like mo yeah, so moving yeah. on to like the sleeping yeah. side of things. But I think I do agree. Like if you are using a, some form of sort of ducted heating for your tent, you can't really expect more than one or two degrees, I would say, of mm. improvement in the air. I'd, I'd say primarily they're designed for – camper trailers or caravans that are a lot, you know, the actual walls and the structure of what you're sleeping in is yep. a lot more heavy duty than just a, a tent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've mentioned a few times with sleeping but maintaining body warmth like your friend with that 4 p.m. thermal streak, yep, which is a brilliant idea. I mean I don't – I've not thought of that so I'm going to start doing that because um, yep. I get quite cold. But that's a brilliant idea. Trying to get yourself warmer Stay when warm. you're already cold, when you get into bed, it's a it's nightmare. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mattress choice is a big one. Loads and loads of people are still using air, air mattresses. Mattress. And when I say air mattress, I'm talking like the mattresses that are essentially a balloon. They've got P nothing PVC in them. PVC with it, filled Just with air. PVC, yep. plastic, filled with air. Yep. Worst thing ever you can possibly choose to sleep on. For winter. For winter. Yep. Because uh, your body heat goes straight out into that void and – there's, off into the eons. There's, there's nothing insulating, nothing retaining that heat yeah. against your body. So I think also um, Dean from Cedar Summit in that episode 11, he told us that any sleeping bags that have had a, a proper comfort test rating with that EN standard is done on a map with an R value of four or more. So okay. if you're buying a sleeping bag that has an EN rated comfort temperature, if you are sleeping on a mat with a less than an R value of four, then the sleeping bag won't keep you as warm because it's relying yep. on that that insulative layer. So sort of based on that information, I would always recommend for people to look for an R value of four or more, especially if you're a cold yeah. sleeper. I've always thought R3 to four to be kind of that three season mat. If you're yeah. going into into all winter, then yeah, four and above. Yeah. But just to clarify, R value is a measure of thermal resistance. It's not a measure. You don't get a temperature rating with R value. You get a yes. number and that's a, a measure of that mat's ability or any material's ability to resist the, the um, transfer of temperature from one side of that mat or, to the or other. product to the other. So it's stopping hot or cold <laughs> um, underneath your mat yeah. from reaching you on top of your mat. Yeah, because the mat doesn't keep you warm. Like if you have an R-value 6 mat that's super insulative in winter and keeps you super warm and then you go and lay on that R-value 6 mat in summer with a nice cotton sheet, you're not going to be hot. No because your mattress is our value six. So That's there's right. not any correlation there at all, yep, ultimately. Um, but if you don't have a mattress that's, you know, our value four or around that good good um, insulative rating range, again, woolen blankets can be amazing mm. to have either on top of your mattress or below your mattress. Yep. Um, also things like woolen underlay from the Op shop, people give, you know, if you go to the op shop bedding section, you could find like what I've done in, in the past is you can find a, you know, a queen woolen underlay that you can cut. I think you can get three out of it or three or four out of a queen for a single camp mat right. that you can just roll on top and it bundles away with your sleeping bag because it's not super thin. It's amazing. If you do have an air bed, that's where you've got to, then adding blankets or something to that top layer right underneath you is going to warm it up Help. as well. Yeah. And also – um a silver, like a space blanket or something on the ground yeah. underneath the, the mat. It's not going to make you suddenly go from freezing to warm, yeah. but it, it's all things that are going to help. Help, for sure. Yeah. I think when I was little um, growing up camping as well, because, you know, obviously with the um, my nana and pa and all being from the country and things like that, we all had those um, – 
those triangular legionnaire style tents. We all had our mattresses oh, yeah. on the floor and things like that. But literally all the mattresses were covered in sheepskins, all of them. And we slept on mattresses and sheepskins and then we'd sleep on top. I was never, ever cold. Sub, sub-zero mm. temperatures, I don't ever remember being cold okay. camping. So there's a lot to say for how you um, insulate your mattress as well. Yep. Yeah, good one. Um, so you've written flannel sheets. Is that because you just like the feel of them or you I find them flannel, actually I f- warmer? I find flannel sheets really do help. I don't know why, but they're definitely warmer. And I think if you're somebody who camps with some bedding as opposed to just a sleeping bag and a mat, mm-hmm. the flannel sheets can really help. I know that um, often, you know, you can purchase liners for your sleeping bag and things like that. Um, but we've always just used a flannel sheet folded in half and you just sew it along the bottom and up the sides and use that as a liner for your sleeping bag. Right okay. And that always works really well as mm-hmm. well. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know if it's just that texture or that feeling of being s- soft and snuggly and warm yeah. or, or how they actually work, but they're definitely warmer. It's a lot of sleeping bags, the general camping sleeping bags will have a flannel lining inside and yeah, it does that have is that true. crazy sort of feel. And you think about the flannel uh, pyjamas, right? They just, I don't know. Yeah, totally. It is. It's just a nice feel. Totally. I, we have uh, sheets and um, like a doona in our swag. Um, so for summer to sort of cool weather camping, yeah. we, can, we can pull the sheet and then the doona and then the top layer of the swag over us because it's just a basic envelope style swag. So that's yeah. pretty warm. But for the depths of winter, my wife hates the cold mm. and she, she just takes her down sleeping bag. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's, she knows nice that's a safety toasty. blanket. I've <laughs> got to stay warm. I know I can crawl in that if, yeah. if the temperature really goes south and stay warm. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so liners, we were talking about liners before, but you can use them like get fleece ones or, um, even thinner ones that have got tech, you know, they're synthetic technologies or whatever to make them warmer, but it's probably important to know. And I'm pretty sure that this is right because it's always been my understanding, but you don't want to have too many layers between your own body and your sleeping bag or your quilt or your doona or whatever is actually providing you with that insulation because, Insulation works essentially by trapping your radiating body heat. Like if you're not in there, it's not going to be hot in there without your body being in there. Do you know what I mean? So the heat comes from you. And if the more layers that you have between you and that effective insulative layer, the less your body heat is actually getting to that layer. And so therefore it's not able to insulate or trap your body heat as efficiently. So if you're cold, you're better off putting blankets more, you know, and you're using a sleeping bag, you're better off putting a blanket on top of your sleeping bag as opposed to jackets and, you know, trackies and more layers inside. Yeah, I've always – that's been a theory I've always heard as well. Yeah. Um, I've never really understood it or found anything – I don't know where it came from and mm-hmm. I've never found any sort of information that says we've done this study. It would be really interesting to see some sort of heat map sort of yeah um experiment done there because I, I I've, I've always wondered if it's more about if you wear lots of layers you're almost making your sleeping bag redundant because if your body heat's not escaping out to the sleeping bag then you're still staying warm right yeah i think thought. it depends on how how efficient those layers of clothing are versus the efficiency of the sleeping bag and how mm. cold it actually is because there's only so there's only so much warmth that your body can produce mm-hmm. and i'm just sort of solving this the answer in to your, your question you in my head as i go <laughs> but it's like you know you have this sleeping bag that has this comfort temperature rating and you have this sleeping bag that has this comfort temperature rating I'm mumbling out my words here and even though the the um, feel of those sleeping bags might be exactly the same material, one of them has got more because and that's what makes it warmer. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or there might be this material and this material and this one's slightly less efficient at trapping the air and whatever. So it's like I think with the sleeping bag it's not just that it traps air, it's how well it traps that air and how efficiently yeah. it traps that air and how much it can trap that air. So it's like your clothes that you wear will only give you so much warmth. And then whereas your sleeping bag, if it's, you know, designed to be super warm, it's trapping that yeah. air way more than your clothes can and technically therefore you can be a lot warmer. Yeah. With, guess, your, with yeah. your radiating body heat if more of your body heat's coming back to you. Yeah. 
So I've never actually tried it side by side. I slept with a bunch of clothes on. Like I've always wanted to, but I've never yeah. done that. So it'd be really interesting if anyone listening to this has has done this to see yeah. how, how they kind of have it impacted. I wish they'd done a bit more research for this episode on that. Actually, it's kind of come yeah. up in my mind as we talk. But um, I've always kind of said, look, this is the theory, but I've never really had anyone come back and say this definitely works. But yeah. the theory behind like a good well-designed sleeping bag um, that's tested, Ian tested, will provide, <clears throat> excuse me, will provide, will, will retain that warmth or work more efficiently, um, therefore requiring less layers yeah. in the bag. But for it to work efficiently, you need to let the heat into the bag. Yeah. So, yeah, Excuse I think me. it's that some probably a little bit more of an in-depth topic. I but think so. um but yeah, you're talking about before about <laughs> or like hot water bottles. Yep. Um drink bottles can double up as hot water bottles as well. Good now. <clears throat> One that, excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. This seems to happen okay. all the time. <clears throat> must be a Monday morning thing. <laughs> Maybe. I feel like we're here just a few episodes ago and both had frogs in our throat. Um a good a non-leaking hot water bottle. So yeah. an algae bottle with a good quality leak proof yeah. serum. So you can take, depending on how much room you have, if you have like a giant van like me and you can pack a circus tent, um, you can take hot water bottles. <laughs> but if you don't and you pack like Ben, you can reuse your actual drink bottle as a hot water bottle at bedtimes. Right. I'd probably want a cosy on it if I was using like a stainless steel one or something. But anyway, probably, yeah. yeah. Well, you can put it in a, like in a, a drink in bottle a sleeve or something. or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep, that will use And then the last and very important one, I think, is managing condensation. Yeah, which, which we've did, also done an episode did, on that too. We did, yeah. This is a funny 13, one because maybe. Wow. See if we'll check afterwards. Yeah. I was saying I should check now. Yeah. Um, this is a funny one because you to manage condensation, you kind of need to do the reverse of what you think you should do. Yeah. And we covered all this in this episode, right? But we need to let the cold air flow through the tent to let that condense that that warm air out to minimise the amount of moist condensation that builds it, up inside the tent. It goes against the grain, doesn't it? it it's does, like I'm yeah. really cold, and it's wet in here, so I'm just going to open up all the windows. Yeah. <laughs> but you want to avoid it getting wet. In the episode first nine. Place. Nine. Oh, you're episode on, nine. Four episodes out. Yeah. Um. So well, that was way back at the start. What are we up to? Fifty something now. Yeah. Um. So if if your environment's already wet, a wet environment's a cold environment, right? And I'm recalling our conversation in that episode now as yeah. we go through this, you don't want it to get wet. So yeah. in order to stop it from getting wet, you need to let that hot air escape so the condensation doesn't build up between the hot air inside and the cold air outside. So it's counterintuitive. Yeah. You need so to let. Go to episode nine if you want more information yeah, about. Yeah, we won't go into it now. Um, condensation. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, I think that's about it um, for keeping warm. I think we've sort of covered all sorts of areas when you're around camp and in bed and just yourself as a person. Yeah. Um, because I know I personally get really quite cold when we go camping. Doesn't stop me though. But um, yeah. I always love hearing what other other from other you know coldies yeah. in, in the world what um they do to help keep them warm. So if anyone else has Hot tips, Hot tips or, or um, if any of the things we've talked about work particularly well for you, let us know. Because we don't want the cold to stop you going because winter camping is awesome, right? Winter you, camping you, is the you best. Campfires and you've also got crisp mornings with fog and, and yeah. mist and they're awesome. So. Absolutely. Cool. Can't wait to hear from you guys yeah. and we'll see you again next week. Thanks cool. so much for listening. See you then.